Hey, how's it going? Brian here from RV with Tito, and in case you didn't already know it, we've got a Webasto STC 2000 uh, heater installed in our Class C motorhome. I know you typically see them in vans and smaller campers, but I decided to install one in our Class C motorhome, and it's the gas version is the one that we have, and I was able to tap into our gas line and get it up and running. But it was uh, about 10 months ago when I installed it, and we've been using it quite a bit since then and traveling quite a bit throughout the Western United States. And a lot of that has been at uh, higher elevation, which is uh, really what I want to talk about in this video, and that is the, the elevation or the... Uh, the altitude limitations of the STC 2000. I knew that going in that Webasto says you can't use it above, or you shouldn't use it above 4,900 feet, but then there's been some conflicting information that's coming out from a lot of folks who've been using it, even from some Webasto reps that claim that you could probably uh, use it above that or at higher elevation uh, without having to make some sort of altitude adjustment. So I want to talk about that, what causes the issue, which is um, carbon buildup inside. Oh. And what I've learned uh, through all this testing, and also uh, should let you know that I've removed the heater from the RV temporarily, and I'll talk more about why. We'll see what's going on there, but uh, let's jump right in, and I hope this helps you answer some questions you may have on this topic. So first off, I should point out that I'm not a Webasto expert and I'm not a mechanic by any means, uh, but I really like the idea of this heater that really sips uh, gasoline and I could run it off of my, my gas tank and didn't have to use uh, propane. But at the time, I couldn't find a, a good uh, US a distributor for Webasto and and the best one that I could find was actually uh, through Amazon and one of the things that I noticed that uh, on my unit that I really liked was just little things like this this little cool uh, display and control unit the US ones just had a totally different uh, knob based controller and I didn't really like that but I knew that it was a risk going with this Amazon version being a Russian version, uh, it's it's not going to be covered any under any kind of warranty or anything like that. So I was willing to take that risk and give it a try. The other thing that I uh, encountered was a video that came out in the spring of 2021, and it was a guy named Scott who uh, is from this company Vmax, who actually is a U.S. distributor out of Virginia, was on this call or this meeting with. A Webasto rep. The one thing that I took away from that was something that the uh, Webasto rep said, and that was that uh, you know the the main cause or that's driving this limitation is excessive carbon buildup in the uh, the combustion chamber itself, and the biggest reason for that is is that most people when they use it they're they're not letting the unit really heat up and run for a long time. When that uh, heater doesn't actually get a chance to run really, really hot, which apparently it likes to do, then any carbon buildup inside isn't flushed out uh, with, the, with the heat heating up of the unit. So what he recommended was that you do exactly that. When you're at low elevations, uh, turn it on full blast and let it run for a couple hours, a few hours, and uh, just kind of blow out any carbon that's in there, and that should help the unit run better when you go up into higher elevations. Now, during the months of January, February, March, we ran that heater a lot, but we were mostly at a lower elevation, probably below 2,500 feet. And uh, in the Southwest, it still gets cold, and you know, it was still cold at night, and we ran the heater all day, actually, and all night. And it performed very, very, well. Now once we got into April, May, we started moving north and getting into northern Arizona, Sedona, Flagstaff, and we're climbing up in elevation. And then we got into southern Utah and we were still at that high elevation and this kind of went on into May and the heater was still performing well even up into like 7,500 uh, foot of elevation. 
even though I would uh, periodically uh, cycle and run that, uh, run that heater at full blast at the lower elevations, the heater still continued to perform well as we're boondocking at these uh, higher elevations up to like 6,000 feet, 7,000 feet. So I was very encouraged at that point that uh, being able to exercise that heater and just running it uh, at high before heading into the higher elevations was, was the trick. And came back into uh, Colorado and during that time we were at some pretty high elevations from uh, 6,000 feet all the way up to uh, 10,000 feet up in the Leadville area. So it got cold a couple nights. What happened was I started uh, running the heater. I said, well, I'm going to turn on the Webasto because I'm in test mode and realizing that we're pretty high. The first night, it, uh, it actually performed fine. Uh, it was a cooler night and the heater ran throughout the night and it kept the rig warm. So I was encouraged and the second night it was another cold night and uh, when I got up in the morning uh, it was flashing codes at me. So at that point I figured well this is it you know it, it uh, met its limit and you know kind of chuckled uh, because I was wondering when that was going to happen it had to be uh, too good to be true. So, you know, it would flash at like an H02 and an H03. These are hexadecimal. I've seen those before and I, I would just keep trying and after a few times I just stopped. I figured it's, it's gotta wait till I get down to lower elevations. We went into lower elevations, so back down to they say uh, 6100 foot of elevation, which was in the uh, in Idaho, in Driggs area by the, the Grand Tetons. Thought I'd you know try to restart the heater uh, because it was getting a little chilly at times and uh, just as a matter of uh, testing and still it would show codes again and eventually it gave me an H07 code which I didn't know what that meant. I had to look it up. It said heat unit interlocked and so at that point Every time that I would uh, try it subsequently, uh, it gave me that code and it didn't even sound like it was even trying to start at that point. It would just flash that code and I figured I was done and then that I needed to uh, figure out how to then uh, flush it out and try to get uh, the carbon cleaned up. So now, uh, we're back in Washington and in order to, to take care of this heater and clean it, I'd have to probably remove it from the RV. So last night I, I, I uninstalled it from the RV and I, and I brought it in here so that we could take a closer look at it. I can see by looking in the, uh, the exhaust port and the exhaust uh, uh, pipe that there is a significant amount of carbon in there. So I found some also in the muffler here. Now I've checked this periodically uh, while I was using it at, at other elevations and you know while I was running it on high I didn't see a lot of carbon coming out so I imagine a lot of this buildup is from those last couple of uses at that very high elevation up over 9,000 feet. I'm gonna try a couple of things to see if uh, I can clean it up uh, by maybe blowing some air in the intake and seeing how much carbon comes out. You should be able to see anything that comes out here. So let's go ahead and just blow some air in there. Now there's a reason why I wore this black Batman shirt. It's not because of the Batman. Oh. We got some chunks. But not I got a bucket of water here and I'm hoping that's going to catch a lot of the soot that's going to come flying out. So, oh, look at that. Well, 
Well, so far the air compressor is getting quite a bit of this uh, soot out. I don't know if it's gonna be enough, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest outside because it's starting to create a little black cloud <laughs> here in the shop. All right, as you can see, uh, quite a bit of soot came out of there, as you can see from the color of my hands. And I don't know if that's gonna be enough of a cleanup. I thought I'd try to stick my uh, boroscope here into the uh, chamber and uh, see what we can see. Right, yeah, there's an obstruction there, so it's kind of hard to look straight on. What you have to do is switch it to the side camera. Then you can see a little bit off to the sides. All right, can't really see too much with the boroscope. There's too many obstructions in there. So let's uh, go ahead and hook it up and see if it fires up. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, I've had a couple of uh, no starts, but my error code is an H. O2, which is expected because uh, I just redid the fuel line and everything, so it takes a little uh, time to prime. And uh, in the past, it's taken like three or four times. So I'm hoping third time's a charm and we'll get this sucker fired up. Let's try this again. I hear it. It's starting to howl. That's a good sign. Come on, burner. I'll be really happy if this thing starts up. It sounds like it's going. All right, the air is heating up. I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, yeah, that heater is running strong now and I'm pretty pumped that, uh, that I got it back up and running. It's cranking some good heat here into the shop. In fact, uh, that might be a little overkill for the, for the shop here, but I might look into one of those, uh, those little cheap knockoff ones for here. But anyway, uh, I'm really happy I got that back up and running again just by putting some forced air through the, the intake and the exhaust and really flushing that out good without having to take it all apart because uh, that was going to be my next uh, attempt to try to get this back up and running and actually disassemble the whole thing and it would have been a bigger project but there's folks that have done it and i'll leave links to those uh, videos one of them's uh, actually a webasto video that shows you what to do but i'm happy i didn't have to do that even though i was prepared with a set of gaskets here just in case i had to take that apart so i'll leave a link to uh, these in case you wanted to get some for yourself. Now these are good genuine Webasto gaskets and not some cheap knockoff gaskets in case you do have to uh, reassemble it. But again, pretty happy with this whole process. The one thing I did have to do uh, in order to reset that H07 error code because every time I would restart it, it would still be there. But I found that I just went into the settings and there's a reset option on this controller that allowed me to basically reset everything. And that seemed to work. It took me a couple times resetting it to get it to kick in and then eventually it started firing back up again once the pump got primed and all that typical stuff. So it might be different depending upon what uh, controller you have, what uh, Webasto 2000 that you have. Let me know if you've uh, had this issue and if you've been able to uh, overcome it and what kind of uh, altitude have you been able to use your uh, Webasto uh, heater at? I don't know, I'll probably just uh, not use mine now above say six, 7,000 feet and then switch to my LP heater when I'm at those really high elevations because I still have that LP heater in the RV and it still works just fine, but I don't want to use it all the time. So hope you enjoyed the video and you got something from this, please leave any questions, comments uh, below, and I'll do our best to, uh, to get those answered and, and help everybody out here. So take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Wow, <laughs> I 
I'm pretty filthy. 